this pro in this video we're going to be solving the problem of the particle in a one-dimensional box or more formally known as the problem of the infinite square well of length L and essentially what we have here is the one-dimensional time independent Schrodinger equation and basically what makes this an infinite square well is that we have a potential barrier on both sides both at zero and L that goes to infinity so the particle that we're going to have is going to have a wave function that is confined within these two extremes, within these two boundaries, essentially because it cannot really exist outside of it. It cannot ever have an energy that is high enough that to climb over that barrier and exist outside the box. Because we know very well that it, this, uh, this potential here is infinite. So obviously it doesn't make sense that the particle would also have infinite energy to escape it because it, it wouldn't actually reach that point. And given this information, the idea is to find an equation or an expression for the wave function based on this condition. So because we're only interested in the wave function within the two boundaries 0 and L, we can essentially take this function with value 0 because that's the, that's the domain, that's the range of values that we're interested in. So our Schrodinger equation is going to be rewritten as... And that's just going to be zero. So this is going to be equal to E times this. And notice that we're going to have two boundary conditions. So obviously at the boundaries and outside those boundaries, the wave function has to be zero because that means that the particle cannot exist outside that infinite square well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to proceed and solve this. But before we do that, it is convenient to reduce the, the amount of constants that we have here. So let's rewrite this as, let's rewrite it as, so let's move this to the other side. So this is going to be some k squared times phi, and then we're going to have equal to zero. So this is going to be the new form of the, of the differential equation. And then k squared, we just made a substitution here. So k squared is just going to be 2me over reduced Planck constant squared. So that's basically the substitution we made. And now what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to solve this differential equation. So you know if we get the characteristic equation, this is going to be r squared plus k squared equals to zero, which leads to the correct to the roots r minus k and r plus k. Sorry. And this should actually be an imaginary number, right? Because essentially what we have here is we have this positive term, which means that the only way that that can be positive and we can have this expression is by having that imaginary unit in front of the k, multiplying it like that. So that means that our roots are going to be complex. So now that we have complex roots, we remember that the general solution for a second order differential equation with constant coefficients that has complex roots of the form alpha plus or minus i beta is of the form e to the power of alpha x times a cosine of beta x plus b sine of beta x and in this case our alpha is zero because the root only has an imaginary part which is k so that means that we're going to write this as a times cosine of k x plus b of sine kx. So that's going to be the first part of our equation. Now in order to find those two constants a and b we're going to apply the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are going to be this one. So the first one is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to put x equals to zero here. So this is going to give us one and then b sine that's going to give us zero. So that means that a has to be zero. And then for the second boundary condition, we're going to have also equals to zero. But now, since we define that a is equal to zero, we only have this function now. So we're going to get b sine of kl. And now we have two options. We can either choose b to be equal to zero, but obviously that would make the entire solution equal to zero, and that just is unuseful to us. So 
the next option we have is to make KL equal to all the integer multiples of pi so integer multiples of pi so n equals to 1, 2, 3 and so on because we know that for any integer multiples of pi the sine function is going to give us a 0 so now we can rearrange this so that we get k is equal to n pi over l so now we define that constant equal to n pi over l and that's going to be a really useful definition that we're going to look into um, a little bit later on but for now we can just write our general solution as follows we're going to have p sine of n pi x over l so this is going to be the first part of our solution and the second part is obviously relating this back to the energy so we already said that k squared is equal to 2me over Planck constant squared so that means that this expression right here is going to be equal to this expression right here so it has to be n pi l and this is going to lead to the following definition of the energy so that's going to be equal to n squared pi squared Planck constant squared over 2m l squared and if you notice something peculiar about this result is that for this particular system the eigenvalues are going to be all the energy levels in the system and the energy levels are going to be determined by this particular number of integers so for the first level of energy is going to be when n is equal to 1 so we're going to have this much energy and if you notice something peculiar is that the energy of the system is dependent upon two things the first thing is the mass of the particle and the second thing is the length of the box so what happens if we increase the, the length of the box what happens to the energy well if length increases then energy is going to decrease overall so that's basically like spreading the walls between uh, a bouncing wave a standing wave between them the energy has to decrease so that's the general principle behind this and then the second implication of this is that energy is going to be discrete because obviously we need to have a different energy level for each of these values and the jumps are going to be defined by the jumps in this integer so that's a really interesting thing that we need to define as well and this is something that we will explore in the next video as well but for now this is just basically going to be our general solution this is going to be our general solution now the constant b is a bit of a, a bit of a tricky thing to calculate because obviously we cannot just apply the boundary conditions we just found out that it doesn't actually help us solve for b so in order to solve for this constant b which is actually called a normalization constant we will need to use some of the properties of continuous probability distributions and that is something that we will do in the next video